Fly, Eagles, fly. And they did last season. They overachieved in Jalen Hurts' first season as a full-time starter. They made the playoffs with nine wins, and the offense getting a big boost this year. Trading for A.J. Brown is going to help out last year's top pick, Devontae Smith, at the wide receiver position. The offensive weapons, fast and young. 24-year-old Miles Sanders at the running back position. The old dude. At the skill positions is Dallas Goddard, the tight end, at 27 years old. For more on the Eagles and what to expect this season and also some future bets, let's bring in Sportsline's Amory Hunt. And let's start with that offense. What are your expectations for, for Jalen Hurts and company now that they have A.J. Brown, a big-time wide receiver? I'm expecting a lot of points. And we saw this offense really get into the gear uh, at certain parts of the season. At sometimes they just dominated with their run game. At sometimes they just dominated with a big play in the passing game. But now you add an A.J. Brown, you get a healthy offensive line. This offense should be even better than what we saw last season, which was a very good offense, efficient offense. But I feel like now they have the potential to be big play offensively on, on either side. You talk about run game, passing game, and A.J. Brown takes a lot of pressure off of a Devonta Smith and now because Jalen Hurts is you know best friends with AJ Brown he doesn't have to force the ball to AJ Brown they understand the team concept and I think we'll see a better passing game as a whole yeah kind of like the Tua situation in Miami Jalen Hurts has the weapons now to really succeed are you buying or selling Hurts making a big leap in this his third year in the league I'm buying it when you look at what he does well he's a leader he does a great job in playing through pressure, understands how to play through pressure, and also works to get better. And this is a, a key element of playing quarterback, someone that is not afraid of pressure, wants to get better, wants to, the pressure on his shoulders. He hears all the naysayers. And I feel like now, when you've added these weapons, he's going to embrace that. We've seen him get better every season as a quarterback dating back to Alabama, even showing some humbleness, getting benched, staying there, competing, working on his craft, going to Oklahoma. And if it wasn't for Joe Burrow's fantastic ridiculous Heisman year hurts his numbers that year were ridiculous in his own right he probably would have won the Heisman so I have no reason to doubt that this guy won't improve this season with all of the added weapons now that he's in the second year of the same system he had never had that since high school so we should see the best of Jalen Hurts something we probably hadn't seen uh, prior to this and then on the defensive side of the ball which is uh, where they spent most of their draft capital they also made some gains in free agency how much is having James Bradbury opposite Darius Slay going to help both of them and the whole team defend the pass this season. I love it because it's the yin and the yang. You have a guy that's a little bit more patient in his approach in Bradbury and a guy that's a little bit more of a risk taker and they're going to balance off each other. You're going to have the steady presence of a Bradbury with someone like Slay on the opposite side being able to go and get the football. And also you have Avante Maddox now sliding to a more natural nickelback role. So now you're starting three. It's excellent. Plus, it gives you the benefit of continuing to develop guys like Zach McPherson, who you drafted out of Texas Tech, and also someone like Harry Vincent, who you brought in on waivers. So I love the plan here, getting good veterans, stable veterans that balance one each other out while also sliding Maddox down on the inside, allowing your second-year player McPherson to continue to grow and develop and continue to play a, a certain role within your defense. I, I think this was one of the more underrated moves uh, the NFC team made all offseason. They only drafted five players, but a couple of big names from that national champion Georgia defense and Jordan Davis and N'Kobe Dean. Which rookie do you think is going to make the biggest impact for the Eagles? I would have to say it'll be Jordan Davis. You think about why? Well, look at where he's going to play. When the Eagles are great, their defensive line is excellent. And you bring in someone that was an excellent defender. People may pigeonhole him as just a nose tackle, but when you look at him and in, in his quickness, you see potential there. You see someone that can be a one-gap penetrator. You can see someone that could put in the rotation and play multiple uh, fronts, uh, multiple techniques up front. And that's going to allow that defensive line to stay fresh, stay versatile, which will make that second level their job even better. So I feel like Jordan Davis, because of where he was taken and how he's going to fit in, you have Hargrave, you have Fletcher Cox. I just think this is going to be a home run uh, opportunity for him to really showcase what he can do. Something that he was asked to do at Georgia was, okay, one gap stuff and let those linebackers make plays. But with Philly, I feel like there's a special role for him 
that could showcase a little bit of his passing capabilities that we didn't see at Georgia. And Emory, when you look at their schedule, pretty favorable on the surface, especially at the start. They have the Lions, Vikings, Commanders, and Jags, the first four games. But which stretch in your mind is going to be their most difficult this season? I would say weeks 11 through 13 because they could really get out of the gates undefeated before the bye week. But after that, people will say, well, how good are the Eagles? Well, that week 11 through 13 stretch, you have Indianapolis, Green Bay, and Tennessee. The first two teams should be leaders in their division. Tennessee is someone that could be a leader in the division. They're going to get a challenge from the Colts. And if the Eagles want to be taken seriously as a team that could go far in the playoffs, these three games will tell you how good this Eagles team is because each one challenges, challenges you in a different way. Your defense will get challenged from Green Bay. Your offense will get challenged from Indianapolis. I feel like they'll be a very good defense as well as Tennessee. We know what pressure they can bring. And all the improvements that you made in the offseason on both sides of the ball will get tested thoroughly in these three matchups. So I feel like that's the key stretch for Philadelphia. Nine and eight last season. What's your record prediction for the 22 season for Philadelphia? I, listen, I'm all in on Philly. I feel like 13 and four mm. is a good number for Philadelphia. If you want to say 12 and five, I'm good with that. But let it be known, they're going to win over 10 games. I feel like this football team, if they can split with Dallas, 13 and four is where they're going to go. If they can't split Dallas, in 12 and 5, but I love them at 13 and 4. I feel like because they're going to be able to run the football, they'll be better defensively, which will help them close out games. I keep thinking of that Chargers game last year when Jalen Hurts gave that defense three minutes with the lead and they let Justin Herbert march down the field and they got the game winning field goal. So I don't feel like that's going to happen this year. This defense should be significantly better. So now you'll be able to close out a lot of these games. And I think because of that, and also now we have a second year in the same system. Nick Sirianni understands what works for this football team. They'll be much better and much more consistent from start to finish than what we saw last year. So 13 and four for me for Philly. Wow. 13 and four is the record prediction from Emory Hunt. Uh, give us a, a future that you like on Philadelphia being so bullish on them this season. Well, because I, I went all the way out there with 13, I, I feel like the best value now um, is to take them to win a division. I feel like it's at plus 185. So you can take that to get them to win the division. When you look at the other numbers, you know, the is juice to them winning over nine games. So obviously a lot of people feel like Philly will be good this year, but to win the division, they have to get past Dallas. And again, good value here earlier in the preseason or in the offseason, because if they can't sweep Dallas, they're not going to win the division. I feel like that's the, the test for them this year in order to hit that number. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, more future bets. I think they're 14 to one at Caesar Sportsbook to win the NFC. They're 30 to one to win the Super Bowl. If you think this team is is good enough to win 13 games in the regular season, do you like either one of those numbers? It, I, it depends on how good this defense is going to be, um, because you have a team that I talked about earlier uh, in New Orleans that's right down there as well that can be very good on offense. We know how great they are defensively. But low key, the Eagles have their number the last times, the last two times they met. But that would be a roadblock. I feel like, you know, Tampa could be a potential roadblock if they have to face that defense again. So I feel like all of what we're talking about here with Philadelphia hinges on whether or not this defense can take a significant step forward and stop in a run, uh, an even better job of turning the ball over and getting off the field on third downs. If that happens and Jalen Hurts is taking the, the natural progression step forward, Yes, they'll be able to beat the Saints. Yes, they should be able to beat Tampa. But that's a lot to ask, which is why I'm only comfortable going with the division. Conference, I have to wait and see. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.